Have you ever killed Nazis before? Listen, ma'am. We were born to kill Nazis. If I were in the shoes of legendary run-and-gun shooter protagonist B.J. Blaskowitz, I wouldn't be mad about my twin daughter's performance in Wolfenstein Youngblood, but I would be disappointed. The young Blaskowitz approach to co-op is on the whole serviceable, but it does nothing but cramp the style of its inherited trust fund of combat and stealth gameplay. Without a similarly outlandish cast of characters to liven up the alternate history setting where Nazis won World War II, it's perfunctory compared to the extremely high standards set by Wolfenstein II The New Colossus. Nearly everything about Youngblood feels like a step down. Outside of a single reveal, the story of the daughter's search for their missing dad in Nazi-occupied Paris in the 1980s has nothing up its sleeve. And if BJ fucking Blaskowitz doesn't want to be found, there is nothing and no one on God's green earth that's going to find his ass. There's a stark lack of interesting characters in the mix, too. The twins' defining character trait is being snort-laughing dorks together and fist-bumping like gender-swapped frat boys. They're not unlikable, but they're not exactly breakout stars I want to see more of, either. Meanwhile, Abby, the daughter of Wolfenstein 2's Grace Walker, is about as bland a hacker-helper character as you'll ever find, and the endlessly cackling villain isn't fit to shine Irene Engel's jackboots. The sisters start with at least a few of the key moves BJ has to work with in Wolfenstein 2, most notably the double jump, and they earn plenty of upgrades from there. To its credit, there are too many upgrades to get them all without playing exhaustively, so specialization does matter. You can focus on buffing up your health and armor maximums, intensify your melee damage, gain the ability to pick up and upgrade heavy weapons, and more. We also get pretty much all the same arsenal of pistols, shotguns, SMGs, rifles, etc. that their father wielded two decades earlier, though it's a buzzkill that only pistols can be dual wielded. Guns can be upgraded to increase their power as you go, and it's the most visible and satisfying representation of progression. But the addition of a leveling system doesn't do the combat any favors, because enemies beneath your level are mere fodder, and those above are annoying bullet sponges. There's no loot like in Fallout or Borderlands, so there's no potential for the reward to be worth the risk of punching above your weight. And while you can travel to zones in any order you want, these guys effectively wall off certain zones until you've leveled up, negating much of the openness of the non-linear level structure. Of course, shooting Nazis until their faces fall off is only two-thirds of the magic of Wolfenstein's previous success. The other is quietly stabbing them. But, naturally, Youngblood messes this up too. Its level and enemy layout simply don't seem designed with stealth in mind, and attempting to play it the way I'd approach previous games almost always went poorly. Instead, you're supposed to use the blatant design band-aid of the cloaking device, which is an ability so essential, it's one of the two you choose from when you're initially creating a character. It feels like a cheat probably because it absolutely is a cheat, Stealth just isn't nearly as interesting in Youngblood as a result. Co-op does get a fair amount right. From the start, it's conveniently and seamlessly drop in and drop out because your sister is always with you, controlled by either a friend, an internet rando via quick match, or a mostly competent AI when you're playing solo. You can play with anybody you want regardless of your respective levels, and your partner even gets to take their progress back to single player, which is always appreciated. That said, I had more than one incident where my co-op partner would experience an annoying lag between when they pulled the trigger and when the enemy they shot would actually take damage. There's a generous down-but-not-out system where you can revive each other when you're in trouble. But once that generosity runs out, the consequences of death can be, as they say in Germany, uber-stupid. One mission sequence culminated in a battle that killed me several times, and each time, it booted me so far back that it took me about 15 minutes just to get back to the boss fight. Just as bad, Youngblood restarts you at the nearest checkpoint with the amount of ammo you died with, not what you had when you first reached it, so you have to spend a bunch of extra time scrounging for ammo. There's plenty to do in Youngblood beyond the 12 to 15 hours of story missions, including dynamic actions that pop up and invite you to plant bombs or listening devices or straight up murder some dudes when you have a moment en route to your larger objectives. There are also tons of side missions that you can take on by talking to the characters idly standing in the hub area. That's arguably the meat of Youngblood, and could carry you forward for another dozen or so hours of cathartic, justifiable homicide. But frankly, I'd rather spend that time replaying The New Order and The New Colossus. <laughs> Wolfenstein Youngblood is an aggressively okay co-op shooter that doesn't come close to recapturing the joy of its predecessor's action or its surprisingly interesting characters and story. It doesn't completely fumble the fun of its weapons and abilities, or counteract the pleasing sensation of squishing Nazis between your toes. 
but it does make it harder to enjoy at seemingly every turn, with an out of place leveling system, busted stealth gameplay, and some aggravating boss fights and inadequate checkpoint saves. For more on Wolfenstein, check out the first 27 minutes of Youngblood, and catch up on the story so far in 5 minutes. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Do you think we're missing something? Like what? Like the snake in the grass. Can't you just enjoy life for a second, Jess?